Hello and welcome to the 23 video that I'll be posting in my Unity platformer tutorial series. And in today's video, we're actually going to be finalizing our level one. And we have to solve all of the problems that our level one holds. And we actually have a total of five problems that we are facing right now. And the first problem is if we click on play right now, is the fact that our player is moving like the movement of our player is clunky as you can see like the force is weird when i go left and right when i go jumping and yeah then the second problem is our animation with our player which has a delay and our frog animation also has a delay which you can't really see but then there is a delay and if we click on our player right now if, if you are playing the game you might feel that the animations are delayed and we will be solving that too. And the third problem is the fact that if we, for example, jump on the wall here, like cling on the wall. Let me try to show you. If we cling on the wall right now, like right here, I can still jump and we are still free to move from the cliff. As you can see, I'm not supposed to jump at the edge of the cliff, but I am still jumping. Then the fourth problem is the fact that if we are dying, we've already reached the void, we've already reached the void, but the game doesn't restart. And that is also a problem. And finally, the fifth problem is the fact that our player here is or has problems when it comes to jumping on the cliff. And that I will also solve in this video. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna solve the player's movement problem. And this actually can be solved really easily by going to our player, and we're gonna edit some of our rigid body here. So for the mass of the player, I'm gonna change it to 2.5 because I want it to be a little bit heavier and for our linear drag, it's gonna stop us from skiing or gliding through the platform. And angular drag, I will change to one. And gravity scale, I'll change it to 10 so that we have higher gravity. And now if we go to our collision detection, I'm gonna change it to continuous because I want to always have constant rigid body or detection. And sleeping mode, never sleep, so it's going to always run because our player will always have to run. And then our constraints, you don't need to change anything of that. And we are essentially done with editing our rigid body. So now if we click on our player right here, as you can see, I'm trying to move, but I can't move. And this is because of our gravity. As you can see, our gravity is 10. And now our movement speed must also be increased. So I'm gonna change it to 320, jump force to something like 40, for example, hurt force to something much larger so that the player can be pushed by the enemy. And then player current health is three, and that's it. So now if we click on our play button right here, when we move the player, we can see that we are actually the movements are much more smooth, smoother and much more responsive. As you can see, if I let go of my key, that actually stops, stops, stops. But then our animation is delayed. And when we jump, as you can see, now we don't really jump that high, but then the movement for our jump is constant. And our animation, as I did say before, is a little bit lagging or delayed, as you can see, delayed. And that, it's another problem we have to solve, and that is when we jump on the frog, it doesn't want to explode anymore. And that is because of the frog's mass. But I'll get to that in the later parts of the video. So now we can go to our animator here, as you can see. We go to our animator, go to click on any of the transitions. As you can see, it has an exit time. And we have to uncheck that. And if we go to our settings here, click on fixed duration and change the transition duration to zero. 
And by doing so, we basically have zero delay. Because what Unity like to do is they like to make a transition, which is really helpful for other assets when it comes to the 3D world. But then when it comes to 2D world, we really just want it to constantly or directly change from one state to another state. And we don't want any delay. And that can be done by clicking or unchecking the exit time, uncheck the fixed duration, and changing the transition duration to zero. And we must do that to all of our transitions. So this might take a while, and I'm going to speed things up. And now, as you can see, we have changed all of these values to uncheck the exit time and then uncheck the fixed duration and changing the transition duration to zero. And now if we click on our play here. Our player animation is now having no delay. But as you can see, our jump Animation is now not going to default because we are not jumping high enough. And we can just change that in our player, in our player collide controller script here, go to our jump force and let's just add to 65 or something like that, for example. Now if we jump, as you can see, we are now jumping, but we are now not falling any longer. And we can fix that by going to our script Go to our scripts here, go to our player controller. If we go to our falling animation, if player say it was jumping and here you go. I just changed this to something bigger, like two for example. And let's click on play. As you can see now we are jump falling and we are now actually moving with no delay. And the reason why I really had to change that value to two was because our gravity scale was so large that the number will never reach 0 0.1 float. Okay, so I'm just gonna change it to something much larger, so our system can easily detect. And it has worked. And now we're actually gonna do that to our frog animation too, because we don't want any delay. Now if we click play right here, we can see that our frog also animates much more smoother. If I jump on the frog right now, you can see that the death effect is much more cleaner and much more faster. And yeah, so that already solves our first and second problem. And now we're going to our third problem. And now we're going to try to solve our third problem, which is the fact that if we go to the side of the wall, we can still jump on the wall. You can see, jump, jump, jump. And let's start fixing that problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new object here. So I'm going to click on create empty and I'm going to name this something like gravity helper because it's going to help our gravity so that our player don't jump at the edge. Yeah. I'm going to name this something like really simple so that I can still understand what it is. And I'm going to add a component and it's going to be a box collider 2D. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to edit collider. And as you can see, the collider spawns here. And the purpose of this collider is to, is to select on the edge here. Like so. Like right around something like really thin like this. Yeah, this is good enough, right? Yeah. So the purpose of this collider is to tell or block off the player.
from actually jumping when touching that collider. And if we click on our play button right here, we can see that we are actually not touching the edge. We can just go to our edge here and add a box collider for every edge. And this might take a while, so I'm gonna speed things up. There are actually many ways to do this, but this is the most simplest way you can do this. And yeah, so I'm going to keep this beginner friendly and try to make it as simple as possible. Okay, so now if we click on our play button here, if we go to our edge here, we can see that we are colliding with a box with another collider instead of our ground directly. And that little tiny gap of space doesn't allow us to actually collide or touch the edge of the map. And by doing so, we are not touching the foreground. And the only reason why we can jump is because we are touching the foreground. So if we add a little tiny gap, so that our player doesn't touch the ground or foreground layer, then we're actually not allowing our player to jump. So now our player will collide with this box glider and this box glider is essentially just there to give a little tiny gap so that our player is not touching the foreground and it's colliding with the box glider instead of the ground. So that's why that is really important to add a collider there, collider 2D. Okay, you can actually use any other colliders like polygon colliders, but then it'll make your life or time much harder because polygon colliders have edges while box sliders are just squares and this is perfect for the edges. And that's it. Okay, and we are done with our gravity helper. And now we're actually going to be adding another or solving another problem. This is our fourth problem, and that is the fact that when we are jumping here, uh, and then we go down, and then we go to the void, and we are still going down, and the game is not restarting. And the game should restart when we're actually down there. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to create a new, or create another empty object here. Create empty, and I'm going to name this game object fall border and this will be our border for which when we cross that border we want the game to restart so i'm going to add component i'm going to make a box glider because box glider is the easiest one we have and we can just make a border here just make a long border you can also like increase the height for example we want it to be taller like right here i think that's good enough and then I'm going to add a script for it. So I'm going to right click or we're going to go to our assets, going to go to our scripts, right click, create C sharp script. And I'm going to name this fall player fall. So player fall. Okay. And then in our, and then we are going to double click it. So it's going to open visual studios. And then we are going to type in a few line of code. And the few line of code will be going to be using unity, unity engine dot 
scene management because we want to scene or we want to manage our scene so that our game or when the player is actually touching that edge then we want it to know that it's time to reload the game so we're going to go to our fall border i'm going to click its trigger so that we can know that when our player is actually touching the or colliding with that collider it's not going to bounce off or do physics it's just going to trigger something and we're going to type in below our void update private void on trigger enter to d and then we are going to say if collision dot game object we're going to say wait no if collision dot compare tag because we want to take in our tag and we're going to type in this the tag which is player and then we want it to reload our scene we want it to reload our scene and i've actually covered this in the past video so let me see if you guys can do this as part of a challenge so pause the video right now and try to do this as part of a challenge i want you guys to to reload the scene and it's going to be placed inside this if statement right here so pause the video right now and try to do the challenge Okay, so if you do know how to solve this problem, good job and very nice. You're actually one step closer to programming your own game because this is also an important feature for scene management. And the way we can do this is we're actually going to type in this line of code here. And this line of code is obtained from our player controller script. When our player control, when our player current health is zero, then we want our scene manager to load scene and we want it to get this to go to the scene manager to make sure that we get the active scene and then we want to get the name of it so that this is a string okay so that is actually the only code we're going to be needing for this so now if we click on our play button right here and let's try to jump off the cliff here If we go to our scene view here, our player seems to be falling continuously. And you know why that hasn't worked? And the reason why is because we haven't attached the script. <laughs> okay, so now if we click on our play and jump off the cliff right now, we are reloading the game. And that is all of the four problems solved already and now we only have our last problem and that problem isn't about our game system but it's about climbing the ledge or steep here so let's click on our play button right here and if we move our player near a cliff we can see that it's moving and it has successfully climbed up the slope and the reason why we can do that is because of our player collider here it's a box collider however it can climb up the slopes because we've already fixed that in the past video where we created the slant here with our polygon and Although that is working nicely, I actually wanted to make sure or modify a little bit more for our box collider here because as you can see, if I click on play, the 
movement for our player is that it's floating in the air. Right, and we don't want that. And I'll be solving that right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our component here. We're gonna add a polygon collider here. And then we are going to add, edit our polygon collider here to form the shape of a slant a little bit. I'm gonna click Windows to delete some of these. And we are going to go back here. I think that's okay. I think that's okay. For like the edge here, we don't actually need any of these. I'm actually going to be just closing it right inside this. So what's important is this left part here. To make sure that we can climb up easily. And, and then since our image is a little bit weird and wonky a little bit in a way, we're actually going to go to our box slider and resize it a little bit so that it fits this hand right here. And then the bottom part of this will be our polygon collider here. So I'm going to fit in the leg again. And I'm going to move this to here. Move this a little bit so I can fulfill the leg. And yeah, and the problem right now is that this box collider and our polygon collider are actually clashing because they are now one collider. And the way we can solve that is by adding a component here and we're gonna name this Composite Collider 2D. And a Composite Collider 2D is essentially a... Wait, it's essentially a collider that allows both our box collider and composite collider to become one. Now, if I click on this right now and I click on play, we are actually working up our way here and our, and for some reason we cannot jump. And the reason why we cannot jump is because in our player control script, we have actually modified our player controller script to follow our box collider here. It says, if we click on our player collider here, it's gonna say player collider equals to get component box collider. And what we did just now is we changed it to a composite collider and we're gonna change that to composite collider real quick. So I'm gonna name this Composite Collider 2D. And then instead of saying that Player Collider will get the component of Box Collider, it's gonna get Composite Collider 2D. And Composite Collider 2D is just basically mashing up from one Collider 2D to another Collider 2D and it will form one shape. Now if we click on our play button right now. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, we are climbing up. And if we click on our space button, we cannot still jump. Well, that is because our Polygon Collider 2D is not used by Composite, so click on that. And for our Box Collider, we are going to click on Use by Composite 2. And now, we should be able to jump. As you can see, everything is back to normal, and our movement here is much more smoother. And as you can see, if we jump on the enemy right now. And overall, this can help increase the slant, as you can see here. It's much more easier to go up to slants now by using this Composite Collider. And essentially, Composite Collider is a collider that's main purpose is to mesh two colliders into one collider. So if you have a box slider and you want to, let's say, outline the whole shape of an ear and you can't do that with a box collider right you need a triangle collider for example and you need a circle collider for the bottom for example then you need to make them you make them shapes like this is a triangle then this is a triangle this is a square and you want them to become one collider then you can just put in composite collider and it will out, and it will outline one shape 
And that's what I essentially done with this. And as you can see, this composite collider can also become an, an is trigger and used by an effector. So it's essentially just like a normal collider, but then it mixes up one collider that you have and another collider that you have, then you mix them into one collider so that it will become the collider that the player or item that you are using. And that is what I am doing here. So now we are actually going to review all of our code in our gravity helper here. We created this C sharp script, but we actually do not need it if you are going for the short path and the much easier path. And that is going to go and covering each of the edges with box player 2D. So I won't be discussing that, but then in our player fall, I'll be discussing it right now. And we don't change anything other than typing in the new keyword here saying using unity engine dot scene management to make sure that we can scene manage or restart the scene when the player is dead already or jump off the cliff. Then we say here in our new method, private void on trigger enter, which means that we are entering another box slider that has is trigger on it. And if the collision tag is player, then we want our scene manager to load the scene and to get the current active scene. And then what is the name of that current active scene? And I want to load that scene right now. And that is what this code is trying to say. And other than that, I think I've only changed this composite collider 2D so that the system knows that we are no longer using box collider 2D, but composite collider 2D. And probably I've also changed the fact that instead of 0.1 here in our animation state, I change it to two because our gravity scale is so large that the numbers cannot reach 0.1 until it reaches the ground or touch an enemy. And you can actually modify this and it's actually based on your preference in the end of the day. And that's it actually. We are done with today's video and I've covered up all of our problems and I've solved them problems. And all you need to do is actually create another level by creating new or duplicating the scene. And then you can just create new enemies and level design based on your preference. And that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys understand more about Unity platformer making. And in the next video, I'll actually be discussing about title screen. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next video.